Hey, here we are. Sorry about the delay, um, but here we are talking about decluttering and um, letting go of clutter. Letting go of clutter from your life. And um, anyway, <laughs> it's the usual few minutes of warming up to talking live. Um, I was uh, just, just got done working with a client and um, there's something really refreshing about doing the decluttering, something quite powerful and wonderful about it. Because always the, the start of the clutter bus is the person being really uncomfortable. Because um, they, you know, like, like the guy I was saying that I was working with, he goes, he goes, I totally don't want to do this. And he sounded like he didn't want to do it. And he said, can I just quit right now? And, um, and he was half joke and half serious, but really he was honest, you know, because there was this resistance of, to wanting, of, of, of not wanting to let go. You know, this feeling of I need to protect my stuff uh, and, and, and not to even consider questioning the things, the clutter. And so, um, I said, you know, that's really natural. That's really natural that you feel that way. And let's take a look. Let's start to take a look and, and see what we can find. I'll make it a lot easier for you than, than you think it's going to be. So we did. We just started going right into stuff, you know. And there was still there was some resistance for a few minutes, but then it really it went away and we just seemed to much... Uh, relieved you know just the relief was palatable you know you could see it and he started to relax and he looked like he was feeling better and more alive so so that was really wonderful um so you can um type in over to say something if you want to share about any clutter situation that you have going on or share any insights that you've had or um or if you want me to just talk about a subject in general and um, those, those are things that you can do. And uh, we're doing this at a new time today, so we'll see um, how it works. You know, if we uh, um, get a, get some um, some good things going here. I um, I was thinking about. This one client that I um, I read about it in the blue book, the uh, clutter bus in your life. He um, he lived in a three story condo and he had quite a lot of stuff. And he um, he was really overwhelmed with life. He had pretty much given up and and surrounded himself with things. And um, and there was so much stuff. I'd never seen so many things. Hey, Maria. And he was, um, I thought, how am I going to help this guy? There's so many things here. Like, I can't imagine being able to um, go through it all. And he was so, he was really closed off. He was very kind of showing no emotions whatsoever. He's kind of a tough guy, you know, looked a lot like Charles Bronson if you know him from the death wish movies from the seventies and um, so we got to the top level and, and he, he said like, I'm, I'm so embarrassed, you know, and when he said that he was, there was an openness to him, a vulnerability. And I felt like um, I could help him at that point because he was open, you know, it takes like an openness to be able to declutter that's why sometimes like, you can't really tell anybody to declutter. You can't make anybody do it. There has to be this feeling of like, I don't want to, I don't want to live this way anymore. I don't, I don't want to live under the debilitating influence of things that no longer serve me, you know? So, um, so I worked with him for a while and it was, it was really good. Hey, Elizabeth, welcome, welcome aboard. If you want to um, ask or share about anything today, um, feel free. 
Uh, we'll see how many um, people we get and what kind of talk we get, what we end up talking about. We'll see how it goes. Um, yes, so that was an extreme situation of clutter, but I always look at every clutter busting situation the same. It's like, here's a person who's stuck. They're favoring their stuff over themselves, you know, and they're in a battle, like, because a part of them wants to be free from that, but another part of them is still held down by that feeling. So I like to make it easier. And um, anyway, you know, you make it easier by encouragement and kindness and support and understanding. And those are things you can start to have for yourself when you're feeling stuck, you know? It's not my fault. I was taught to favor things more than me. So it's a little hard for me initially to start to go through my things and, and question them. So I'll expect some resistance, you know, but I still want to move forward because I want to be free from clutter. I really want to remove the things that aren't serving me anymore so that, so that I can um, enjoy the things that really do matter to me. You know, I don't want to support anything that's in my life that used to support me, but doesn't anymore, you know, or something that everybody else says will definitely support me, but it isn't, you know. I really want to, want to be honest with myself, take that look and start, you know, questioning things and, and see what kind of response I have. To, ha to have a curiosity and openness to see like, what, what, what am I feeling? What am I just, what am I seeing? What am I discovering about myself? You know, the interesting thing is like, when you look at your stuff, you're essentially looking at yourself not because you not because of the stuff but because you're asking yourself how do i feel about this thing you I mean, i'm really curious is does this serve my nature today or not i mean maybe it served me many years ago but i'm a different person now so i don't want to live my old life anymore cuz it doesn't fit me so i want to take a look and see and then remove what what isn't like remove the stuff that isn't helping me. I'm, and I may be attached to it. I may feel that attachment like, oh, you know, I really want this. <laughs> but, you know, by talking about like this, you start to understand what the attachment is and how it's not, it, it, how it's holding you back. There's like a tension and attachment. It's a restriction. It constricts us. So, we have less capacity to live our life. And, and we've been trained to think like, oh yeah, our value is all the stuff that we have. You know, there's your point of view, your value, like, oh, I have all these things that makes me valuable because we're trained to think that way. And then there's everybody else's opinion of you, like, oh, you're valuable because you have this and this and this and this and this. Or you're not valuable because you don't have this and this and this. <laughs> so there's a lot of, measurement of who we are on our stuff and none of it's true because our value is greater than anything in our life and it always will be let's see uh, maria says i got stuck in the scarcity mindset due to having a limited budget so it hinders me getting rid of things that i could need because i actually don't have the money to get it again yeah so if there's something like you, if you can't afford a certain thing and you need to have that thing to do certain things, you know, then um, it, it depends, you know, it depends. Like if there's something like, I really hate this. And whenever I use it, it like backfires or causes problems or just makes me really irritable. Like if there's like definite side effects to having that clutter, then you want to let it go. But if it's like, all right, this isn't the best thing, but I can't afford a replacement right now. So I'm going to use this. And um, for the time being, you know, it's like you measure, you weigh it out. You just weigh it out and you see, 
you know, if I get rid of this, what's going to happen? How's that going to be? Um, but you still really want to favor the letting, you want to lean towards the letting go on that, you know, because otherwise you're influenced by all these things that you have that you don't like, and it restricts you from, it restricts you from new things coming into your life. Cause that's what clutter does. It kind of, um, it, it fills our life with this inertia. And then it's really hard for us to, um, either to make more money or to have new things come in that we like because our life is so full with the things that we don't care for. So um, I would, I would consider those things. Um, Maria says, what are your thoughts? So yeah, basically I think it's really good not to have, not to come in with any sympathy for stuff when you're decluttering just to have this feeling of, all right, this, you know, I'm going to question things fully and really see, you know, do I like and use this or not? What does it feel like living with this thing in my life, this activity, this tangible thing, and this person being in my life? Like, what's the effect? Like, how does it feel? That's the main, that's really the first step, asking those questions. And then, and then the second step is seeing how does that feel? Like when I think about this thing, and if you feel a bunch of confusion around whatever it is that you're asking about, that's a red flag. It's a red flag that, that um, there's something amiss, there's something awry, you know, something's not right. Because the confusion could be a distraction device from the attachment. The confusion, like, it's like, a, oh, it's like this, you know, it's like, it's like a dog that's barking at you, <laughs> the confusion. Because it's, it's the attachment that you have for something can make you want to protect it, even if it's hurting you. So it's good to know that going in, like, you know, I'm going to want to hang on to certain things that aren't serving me and that expectation can help you as you're going through like, oh, I see, I'm trying to defend something. Like I'm trying to defend hanging on to this thing. And it's, anyway, I think you get the idea. Maria says, that's good. Good. So um, anything else? Anything else anybody wants to ask about or, or talk about? Um, otherwise I'll just be pulling old stories out and, and and sharing them with you as they come to my mind. Um, that one guy that I was talking about ori um, originally at the at the beginning of the talk, um, the guy was in the three story condo that was filled with stuff. Each room was filled up. Um, some rooms were so filled up you couldn't even walk into a room. And. Um, he revealed to me, like after I'd been there working with him for a while. Um, oh yeah, I remember. I was reaching through, cause there was so much stuff I could just reach into it. You know, it was like piles of it on the floor. And I pulled out this gun, there was a gun there, loaded pistol, you know? And I asked him about that and um, I, I said, um, what about the gun? He, he goes like, well, I have a lot of guns. He was like, 15, 20 guns. And um, and he says, I really need my guns. He goes, I've been living here a number of years and no one's ever broken in or and tried to hurt me or anything like that. And previously, before we ran into the gun, he told me that um, how, how overwhelmed he'd been by the clutter and how he used to put a, he had a shotgun and he told me he used to put it up to his head every night because he was so overwhelmed that he wanted to kill himself, but he could never pull the trigger, you know? So then we came across these guns and he says, like, I need them because um, he, he uh, had this sign that was um, on the front door that said, occupants are home and are armed, you know? So he said, I need all of that because um, it's keeping me safe. And I said, well, I don't know how safe it's kept you because every night you put a gun to your head, you know, with the idea of killing yourself, but then you can't do it. 
and he started crying because he realized like he was so intense about with all this clutter that it, that he just realized how how intensely it had been affecting him for so long and how he'd been hurting himself. You know, he was trying to protect himself from being hurt and he was hurting himself for living with the clutter. So he cried for a good long while, you know, one of those long, long crying jags. And then um, he decided to get rid of the sign about the guns and he decided to get rid of some of the guns. And anyway, there was another layer of clutter that had been removed, you know, and he, and he looked so relieved. Like sometimes people have to really big removal of clutter. It's like they look like a different person, like brand new in a way. Um, Elizabeth said, identify with that mindset as well. Hate to waste. Ultimately, if I don't use it, it's taking up space that I need and pay to maintain. And Maria says, yes, and not have sympathy for this stuff. I like it. Um, yeah, there's that feeling of hating to waste. Like, oh yeah, wasting is bad, you know. Because I think a lot of us are taught that. But then we're injured by having this stuff. I mean, I really can't put it any other way. We, we do get injured. Just like the story of that guy I was telling you about. He was injured from living with that stuff, you know. And the weight of the clutter, the, the stagnant feeling that comes the oppressive, stagnant feeling that comes from hanging on to things that we don't like and use. You know, it, it is an actual weight. And then we get used to it and we don't realize it's there. But it does take its toll on us and it wears us down. And the interesting thing is we, we start thinking of what we can bring into our life to feel better because we're taught like that we're not enough. So we need to bring something in to feel more, you know, to be more of something. So we get more stuff and then we just end up feeling worse, you know. <laughs> so it's really all about erasing, you know. It's, a, it's, it's going in and, and with the feeling of I'm sick of living this way. I'm sick of protecting my things, you know. And I'm sick of like wanting to look at my stuff and not being able to do it because I feel like I should hang on to it. Like it's wrong to question it. You know, I'm sick of living that way. I want to favor myself above all the stuff. I want to be able to do that. So that means I'm going to, I'm going to have to ask questions about everything. And I'm not going to get rid of anything that I like and use. Like, that's the fear that a lot of people have, but you're never going to get rid of something you like and use because, because you like and use it, you know, it's nice when you recognize, Oh, I do like and use this. So you're reminded I have this benefit in my life. And then you remove the things that aren't benefiting you, you know, today. We don't care about things that benefited you in the past, you know, because you can't do anything with them. You know, we have memories of them, but to hang on to the objects doesn't benefit us, you know. I think sometimes we feel like we hang on to that stuff because we can trap the memories in it and, and, and still have those feelings. But when it ends up happening is it blocks new stuff from coming into our life that's fresh and can serve us. And that's what we really, that's all we care about is us today. Like who we are today. Does this, does this feed me today? Uh, Elizabeth says, does it affect you to process all that pain that getting rid of clutter exposes? Um, I think sometimes after some jobs, I feel a little bit heavy, like a little bit tired, but um, I'll take a nap or I'll go for a walk, um, um, you know, or listen to some music or play some, play some guitar. Um, but I, I, you know, I do, like I make sure to take care of myself after the job um, because, um, because it does, it, it is a lot of work. It's, I mean, I'm like processing a lot of information when I'm working with someone, like I'm listening to their voice because the voice is a real big key. Like when I ask someone about something, like I was working with this client today and he goes, do you think I should keep this? 
you know, I, I, I don't know. All right, should I keep it? Uh, uh, and I said, like, you sound so tired when you're talking about that thing, you know? Like, you're making me want to fall asleep just hearing you talk. So I listen to the voice, and like, intuitively, you know? Like, because there's always, this is what the person's saying, and there's, like, what they're actually saying under those words. So I, I, I can hear that. Yeah, I can hear what they're actually saying. And I'm, I'm watching the person's face and their body, how they move their body and if their face lights up or it dims down or their eyes get glazy. Plus like I have this clutter radar. It's really interesting. Like I can, um, if someone talks about something or I just like see things in the room, I can sense like, not that I think it's clutter, like I, would I like that or not, but I can just sense it being around that person, I can see that it either dampens them or brightens them. Just is there something about how I'm built that allows me to do that. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on for me during the clutter bust. And which is why I think I'm a good clutter buster and I was able to write these books that are really popular is because I, I got this special ability, you know? And um, I feel grateful because there's other areas of my life I don't have that a special ability in, you know, like quite a lot of areas. So it's nice to have this and it feels like a real nice service to um, to help people let go of their clutter. Because I know how hard it can be, you know, even with my own stuff, sometimes there's, I can feel that resistance or like my mind gets cloudy because that's what clutter does. And then it's hard to think through the cloudiness. But I think when I work myself, it helps for me to recognize, like, I'm feeling really cloudy right now. So that's a red flag, you know. And um, so um, I hope that answers your question. Um, any more questions? You can ask about anything. I mean, really, like, this is uh, quite open talk. There's, um, you know, because I like the talk to go wherever it's going to go, because that's whatever you bring up is, is what needs to be talked about. And, and anything can be clutter. There's nothing that cannot be clutter. Like, you know, anything that's no longer serving you can be a quite a multitude of things, you know? Um, Elizabeth says your radar is amazing. Thanks. I've worked with Elizabeth, so she knows firsthand experience. Um, yeah, it's pretty neat. I wasn't trained for it or anything either. So, which is pretty neat because I've been trained for other stuff. Like I've been trained for, um, art and, um, writing. And, um, so anyway, I feel very lucky and I feel blessed to, to be able to do this. And, um, and I like to be a voice for this too, because there, there aren't, there are some other voices out there, that, and and but there's but most of the voices out there are saying you need more stuff. You're not enough. You need this. You know, stop being like that. Be like this. Like they're commands. You know, a lot of things are brought to us as commands, and advertising is very good at commands. You know, and as human beings, we respond to commands. Okay, I'll do that. You're right. Authority. You know, authority is really powerful. And uh, advertising or like social pressures, this is how you should be socially. You shouldn't be like this, you should be like this. There's a lot of commanding voices out there. So clutter busting is really about turning your ears around to listen to your voice. And as you're asking with your voice, some of the other voices might show up within your, arise from your self-conscious, you know, and then they'll be like, oh yeah, you should hang on to that because you're supposed to have this, you know? And you start to recognize, well, that's not my voice. That's, that's another voice. So, um, <laughs> that's why I ask a lot of questions because I want to hear your voice. I mean, your voice is the only voice that matters. And it takes a little time to start to recognize oh, what's my voice and what's not my voice to be able to differentiate between the two. And um, 
life becomes a lot easier when you start to do that. A lot simpler, you know. It becomes easier to make decisions. It's easier to notice when something isn't right. It becomes easier to defend yourself. You know, this isn't right. I don't, you know, this doesn't feel right. Because you're asking questions of yourself. Do I like and use this or not? So you're, you, you're sensing like, is this positive or is this negative for me? And you start to suss that out. You start to notice that, notice the difference. Um, Driftwood Father, we're glad to be able to um, to be here today. Driftwood Father, or Driftwood Lover, sorry. Driftwood, that's what happens when I was reading without glasses. Um, Driftwood Lover, it's good to have you here. It's good to have all of you here um, at our new time slot. Friday's at 2 o'clock um, Pacific Standard Time, 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And... Um, Kat says, hi, Brooks and everybody. Got here late because I had someone helping me remove physical clutter. Um, no problem. That's great. You got some help. That's that's a wonderful thing. It's really good. You know, I love to hear stories of, of clutter bus because I know on, on some level that person just became more, became freer, you know. And freedom's like the best it's just one of the best feelings in the world to be free. Because if we're living with clutter, we're um, chained in. I mean, we're we're reduced. We're trapped. When we move the clutter, then things open up, and that's the freedom, the relief that comes, and the openness, you know, and the vitality we feel because we're not dampened down by this stuff. Which clutter dampens you down. It's just something about things that you don't like and use that um, reduce you. And we're more interested in expanding you, you know. Um, Maria says, oh, Kat says, big stuff is too heavy for me to lift. And Maria says, nice cat. Yeah, it's really great. It's really good. So again, you're worth the look, you're worth the investigation. I mean, really, like you're uncovering yourself. Like I told my clients today, like, yeah, I said, you know, you're, you've you been buried alive under this stuff. And so by piece by piece, we're removing that so you can be back in the world because we could use you, you know, fully alive and shining brightly. And, and um, it's true. Elizabeth says, after working with you, I realized the difference between clutter busting and organization. I am an amazing organizer but a crappy clutter buster. <laughs> yeah, it's good to know. I mean, usually like organization has been the way it's been in the past. Like there's the, the container store. They're very much about organizing, you know? And I don't know other products, but I've seen their advertisements. Like organization's a big deal for them. And a lot of times that's what people want to do. They want to like keep everything, but make it look good, you know? organize it, <clears throat> categories and containers. It's like, oh, there's a feeling like I'm gonna be okay once these things are put in their proper places. But the problem is you're still suffering under the influence of things that you don't like and use because they have an effect on you. There's like a string attached to everything that you own and it pulls on you, you know, it has an effect on you. It either brings you down or it, it lifts you up. So a lot of nicely organized things that are clutter, when people come over, they may say like, wow, your place looks really great, wow. But the thing is, you're on some level, you're suffering. Um, so I don't really care about organization. What I found is as the clutter starts going, a natural organization comes in for people that I work with. So they naturally start to, um, like, oh yeah, this can go here. And if I start placing this here, this would work for me. So it's better than just, here's the organization system, start using it, you know? Because then the organizing containers become like expensive trash cans. And, you know, you don't want to spend a lot of money on a trash can. <laughs> um, Kat says, thanks, um, 
it could happen today because I felt okay asking someone for help. That's really great, Kat, that you asked someone to help you remove the heavy stuff. Um, Elizabeth says, okay, where are the cause? And um, yeah, so really we're rescuing ourselves, you know? And it's such a, it's such a great thing because otherwise we're like, all right, what do I, I wanna get this, I wanna get this, I need to have this. I'm not gonna be okay until this is happening. You know, or, or, or I've made this much money or I'm with this person or um, I got rid of, you know, like whatever, like all the things that we think we need to, so that we can start being okay. Um, and clutter busting is basically saying you're okay right now, but you've got some stuff here that's hurting you. So let's take a look at it and see what we can remove. Um, because things are going to come and go in your life and, and good things are going to happen. And then bad things are going to happen and good things are going to happen and bad things are going to happen. So there's no stability. There's no like, I've got these things. Everything's going to be okay now. No. It's learning to be okay regardless by putting yourself first. Like I'm going to treat myself kindly first. And then you can get through any situation, you know, because of the care and the kindness. Um, Maria, I get it about asking for help when it feels right. Yeah, and asking for help, so that's a really nice thing because it may be clutter for us to, that it's hard for us to ask for help because maybe we think we're not worth it, you know, on some level. <laughs> and um, and to ask for help is maybe that's something new, and, and, and but you're certainly worth it. I've never met anybody that I thought like wasn't, like there's something about people generally, like essentially, maybe that's the right word, Everybody, essentially, there's something quite wonderful about them. And they might have some behaviors I like or don't like. You know, they may have some beliefs that I like or don't like. Um, but essentially, there's something really wonderful about them. Like they're, they're exist, they, they exist, that they're alive in their, their heart. You know, there's something quite wonderful about them. And I think that's the case for all of us. And when you declutter that essential aspect becomes a lot more apparent. It comes to the forefront because you're taking care of yourself before your stuff. So that part, um, anything that gets appreciated or recognized shines, you know, grows. So we're, so we're removing the things that diminish us so that we shine and expand naturally you know so there's a satisfaction that comes from that and that reduces our need to get more satisfaction from stuff our people our activities you know it doesn't mean we become like a total minimalist and have nothing and just sit in our room everybody has their own nature what they need to support them but that essential quality is inherent in all of us so removing that clutter that essential quality thrives and then we feel like this inner satisfaction and we feel less of a need to go out and try to get satisfaction from other things. So it actually saves money and gives us peace of mind, <laughs> which is pretty good. Um, Maria says, I hear that about suffering. I've sensed that for many years and learn organizing does not help me with that suffering piece. Um, yes. Uh, Elizabeth says, yes, organization sometimes has a way of covering up the clutter and suffering. Yeah, so we're really learning um, a, a totally different way of doing things. And I like clutter busting because it's simple. Like you don't need anything to do it. I mean, you need some time, right? You need, I set aside some time, but that's that's something that's available to you, you know? Half hour, 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half, two hours whatever works for you. And then starting to um, go in and start asking about things with that curiosity, you know? I mean, I hope that my talking about this sparks that curiosity. So you start going like, hmm, I wonder what things in my life aren't serving me. You know, I'm really curious. 
wonder if there's some, some things that I thought were, but aren't, you know? <laughs> and it's like, and then you get excited at the idea of, <clears throat> excuse me. You get excited <clears throat> at the idea of like, I wonder what's going to um, come into my life once this clutter goes. And maybe that's more peace of mind, or maybe it's um, you find you get along with other people better, or you're, you feel like your health is better, or you get some insights or intuitions about things that you never had before that are beneficial to you, you know? I mean, you never know. Sometimes people um, make new friends or because um, there's a space for that, you know, or sometimes they... Um, a new opportunity for income comes in because the clutter has been removed and, there, and there's a space for that. So there's that excitement about, well, what's going to come in, you know? You never know. And life has a way of knowing what's really good for us. I think we have this idea. I mean, I could say that personally uh, from my own experience because um, I used to want, I used to want to be an actor and I'd train after acting and I got, and I got really good at it. And um, I made a little money off of it, but essentially it wasn't that satisfying, like just doing that. And, uh, but I used to think like, oh yeah, this is really, you know, <laughs> this is really gonna make me happy. And, it, and when I realized it wasn't, um, then, then I began to drop away from that. And I think that's when clutter busting actually showed up. And someone started talking to me about clutter and such and or feng shui, I think it was. I started reading about it and then um, I was just like kind of curious about it. And then one of my friends asked me to help him declutter. And I said, okay. And I did it and he suggested I should do it for a, as a job. And I was like, all right. And I tried and it took off. So, so I let go of something that I thought was really valuable and something new came in that I would never have considered. I mean, never thought before clutter busting, I never thought I want to be a clutter buster, you know? And anyway, life gave me that basically. So when you remove the clutter, you're operating, you're, you're, because we're limited to what we can imagine. Like, oh yeah, I imagine I would like to do this or, Perhaps I would like to do that, you know, or I don't want to do that or, you know. Um, so we're limited to what we can think of. When we let go of the clutter and life has a way of bringing things in, life is unfathomable. There's so many dimensions to life and so many possibilities, things we've never thought of. And life has a way of depositing new experiences and new people and new things into our lives. And um, it can be quite exciting. So um, we have another like 20 minutes or so if you wanna ask about anything or share anything, or you want me to talk about anything. I'm like a clutter bus and jukebox. You like put in a quarter and well, there's no money here, but you just punch in the song you wanna hear. <laughs> and I can talk about, I can talk about whatever area of um, clutter you're, uh, curious about. Um, but again, I, I hope that this does create some inspiration for you to start being curious or start to tr it starts to turn on your clutter radar. You know, that that part of you, that, that discriminating part of you that recognizes like, yeah, this and no, that. I like this, I don't like that. And it's built into us. Like we don't have to learn learn it. It's just starting to use it, warms it up and makes it, um, available, you know, and then you're in the in your closet looking for clothes, what to wear, and then you rec look at certain things and you go, oh, I don't want that anymore, you know, or or are you um, you're in the middle of eating dinner, just thinking about anything, and then you start to think like, oh, you know that activity I do, I don't really like to do that. You know, like things come to you because the radar, it's like the discriminating part of you that intellect, it's, it's there and it, and, it, and it finds things, notices things for you. So you can remove them and, and you can feel better, you know. And there's always gonna be clutter. You can never be clutter free because you're changing all the time. And so new things 
come in. I mean, um, it becomes apparent that something that did serve you doesn't serve you anymore. Like I used to really like Stephen King books. I love Stephen King and I was just reading them like one after another. This is a ways back, maybe like 20 years ago or 15 years ago. And, um, and then I was, um, I kind of didn't read for a little while. I think I was just focused on writing up for a lot. And then I started to get back into reading. And so I thought, all right, I'll get a Stephen King book. And I read it. I started reading it. And I'm like, I don't, this isn't, this doesn't feel good anymore. And I read a little more because I thought, well, maybe it's just that page. And then I read some more and I thought, this Stephen King, Stephen King doesn't serve me anymore. I mean, he used to. It's like, all right, not that. So I let that go. I mean, now I recognize, like, I re really like to read, um, like, Charles Dickens. Oh, I'm reading uh, Robinson Crusoe right now. I'm looking over my books. Um, and those really satisfy me right now for the moment, right? That could change. So, you, so that curiosity, you know, that curiosity about, okay, I'm different now than I used to be. You start looking through your stuff, you recognize, oh, this doesn't fit my nature anymore. Your nature is that part of you that, um, like what feels good, like as a person, what do I like to do? What do I naturally like to do? What, are, what naturally don't I like? Anyway, um, Kat says, why have I spent so many years thinking that the suffering I was feeling about clutter was the right thing to do? It didn't help me care for myself. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. All you know is that's what happens. But today's different. You know, it's a whole new day. And we are the way we are, you know. I mean, there's stuff that I used to do that I look back at like, well, why did I do that? <laughs> and then like, well, I don't do it today. That's all I really care about, you know. I mean, you could figure out why, but it, but it may not really help you um, with uh, living your life. Uh, Driftwood Lover says, great example of how author no longer serves you. Maria says, I'm with you, Kat. If nothing else, Kat, just be glad that that old way of living is falling apart, you know. That that, that suffering was the right thing, you know. It's like, okay, that's not how I feel anymore. That's not the dominant feeling. So I'm grateful that that part of my life is falling away. And here's this new part and let's see what happens, you know. Let's see, let's see um, how this affects my life. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how, what, what comes from this, what's new, what new thing comes from this. So clutter busting, there's something about cluster that helps you with flexibility of living, you know, because life is changing all the time. And I think that's why when things happen that are really intense, like, like the COVID, the, the COVID virus is like throws everybody off because it's big and it, it affects all of us. And there's this feeling sometimes, sometimes people say like, when can we go back to normal, you know, but things can never go back to the way they were things. This is, this is a big change. And so it's learning to be like, there's an acceptance of, okay, change has happened. I'm different. The things around me are different. I'm no, I don't have to think they should be, they shouldn't be like this. Or it should go back to like, however it used to be. Or to dwell on why is this happening now, you know? And as opposed to this is happening. It's not that comfortable. I wish it wasn't happening, but it's happening. So what do I need to do? You know, like I like to use the story of when I got really sick and my lungs got really sick. And um, I was sick for a couple of years from clutter busting, you know, <laughs> that's why I only work by uh, Skype or um, FaceTime or Zoom. But some of the places I worked in were really harsh on my lungs. So my lungs got damaged and I was, there's a part of me like, all right, I'm just going to get well. I've gotten sick before. I'm just going to get well. And um, I thought I should just get well, just be well. But I just got sicker and sicker. And there was a point where I was like, all right, I'm sick. 
And it didn't make me not sick, but it certainly gave me peace of mind. Because the the shouldn't be like this, or why is this like this just added fuel to the fire? You know, this is happening. Okay, everything quietens down. Like, what do I need to do? Okay, this is going to be... This is going to be a difficult time, but what can I do to take care of myself? And uh, let's see. Maria says, what if I have so many things? What if you have so many things that you don't want? Example, I have clothes, not many. I'm not a clothing hound, but I'm tired of them. And they are mostly several years old. Um, then you wrote, but if I need them, are there, there goes more money if I get rid of them. Um, so you're saying you have so many things you don't want. So the thing to do is really the thing to do is like, okay, it's going to take the time it takes to go through this stuff. If you see all the stuff and you consider it, it's too much. Like what if I have so many things I don't want? That's considering everything. And what helps with clutter busting is you pick a doable amount to work on at a time. And you say like, I'm just going to work on this pile or this, drawer or these this part of the closet or just going to go through my phone go through my contacts and i'm just going to do it for this particular amount of time and i may start thinking oh my god there's all this other stuff what am i going to do but it, it's really coming back to one thing at a time so i'm going to do this one particular area and i'm going to look at one object at a time and i'm going to ask do I like and use this or not? There's something about the focus of that, which makes things a lot easier than looking at everything and going, what am I going to do? There's this one thing in front of me. And, and we work better that way. We don't really work well at considering everything, multitasking, you know. It's like, all right, here's this one thing. Like imagining it's a plate of food and you took a bite. Do I want to keep eating this or not, you know? Do I like and use this or not? And, you know, I'm very matter of fact about it. If it's a yes, it's really clear. It's a yes, I like this. This is good. If it's yes, but then it's a red flag. Or no, but I spent a lot of money in there. Or no, but someone gave it to me as a gift, you know. Or no, but I really want to use it, but I'm not using it. <clears throat> I've been wanting to use it for three years. I'm not using it. <clears throat> it's a red flag. <clears throat> and then you make a decision about that one thing. And if it's trash, put it in trash, recycling, recycling. If it's, a, if it's charity, if you're able to, to bring things to charity, if they're open, um, put it in charity container. And then you move on to the next item. Or if it's a thing you want, you put it, um, it's house. You put it where it should live in your home, where you know where to get it. And then you move on to the next thing. <clears throat> and when the timer goes off, then you stop and you set another time to work on a different day. And it takes the time it takes. But doing it that way is doable because I've worked with people over more than one day. And um, we just keep coming back to the next thing to consider. And, and it's a lot easier. Like the whole mind calms down when you do that and the heart too. Um. Cass says, thank you. This is really helping. Elizabeth, linked to one of the most beautiful and haunting articles I've ever read about a, about a transplant. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if you're talking about an article that you've um, read or the story that I told about it. So yeah, it's really, again, it's coming back to life changes. Things are changing all the time. And some of the change we notice and some of it we don't. But when change happens, our needs change. We change emotionally, physically, spiritually, psychically, health-wise, when there's any change in there, then what we need from around us changes. And what ends up happening initially, previously, is we have all this stuff so that everything is covered in a sense. Like if this happens, I'm covered here. If this happens here, or, you know, 
but then we change and our needs change and this is really simplifying down to what do I need? And you learn by asking yourself, you really do. Thinking about it, it doesn't really do anything, but asking, do I like and use this thing or not? It becomes really clear. It becomes, the more you do it, it becomes clearer. <laughs> um, Jeff Woodlover says, Maria, the money, Oh, it's already gone. You spent it back then. <clears throat> oh, yeah, right. That part of the question. Um, yeah, the, you spent the money. The money doesn't, once you've spent money, it doesn't matter anymore. And there's nothing valuable. There's nothing in your life that's more valuable than you. So you could say this costs this much money or this feels like wasting it. But all you're really concerned about is this, you know, this. And what do I need to, um, valuing this, like what do I need? Does hanging on to this thing take care of this? Or does it not? And whether I decide or not is not, has nothing to do with the money I spend on it. It's how does it make me feel? It's presence in my life. How does it make this feel? And not just the body, the feeling under that, that the feeling of existing, the feeling of being alive, that, that you've had as far back as you can remember, you know? How does this feel to that, that essential part of me? And then you see, you know, things get really reduced down when you come from that level. But you know, there's like the attachment breaks down the more you do this. So initially there's some attachment. I spent this much money on this. I got it as a gift. Um, it was a bestseller. It used to be really great for me. Like we put those things up as like we're defending the client in court, you know? And the thing is, is like the only person we're there to take care of is ourself right now. And everything's to be questioned. There's nothing to be not questioned. And you find out who, what serves you, what, what's your allies and what's your enemies, you know? And some stuff are allies. Some things are they very clearly allies and some things become clear that they're enemies to you enjoying your life. And you don't have to live with enemies because you get to, remove them it's your right as a as a person that being a, a living person it's your right to remove anything that hurts you so you're discovering what hurts you and then when you discover that it hurts you, you you get to remove it just the same way you take your hand off of a hot plate or you remove a stone from your shoe you remove an activity a thing a particular person in real life that's, um, sorry about that. Some interesting sounds. <laughs> Forgot to turn off my phone. Um, that happens sometimes, I'll do that right now. Even though we've only got a few minutes left, I still uh, don't want to be interrupted. So, um, oh, Elizabeth said, looks like the LinkedIn post. The title of the article is The Beating Heart, The Redemptive Journey of One Heart. Um, yeah, so maybe there's some value in that, in that article. And really speaking of value, the value is you. It's always you. When I was working with our client today, I wasn't, the only thing I was watching was, is this supporting him or hurting him? And I could see it in his voice or his, body language, um, you know, in the way he answered things. So it's, it's, it's recognizing like, oh yeah, I'm valuable, regardless of what I have in my life, you know, regardless of the amount of money I have or the people in my life or the job that I have, the possessions that I have, 
the state of my health, the state of my body, the state of my mind. I'm valuable right now. There's nothing that I can add to my life that's gonna make me more, more valuable. But removing certain things that <clears throat> aren't serving me are gonna help me recognize my value more because I won't be distracted or diminished or held back. And, and I'll be reconnected with that essential part of me that's the satisfying part of ourselves. And it takes the reliance off of stuff or people or activities to fully satisfy us because <clears throat> they never do. They never can fully satisfy us. Things can be sort of, can be entertaining and pleasurable, <clears throat> but that satisfaction, which is what we've been trained through advertising. Like there's a feeling like if you get this, the, there's fulfillment, you know, if you get the new iPhone, there's like a fulfillment as a person. <clears throat> and essentially you get the new iPhone excuse me, <clears throat> you, you get a nice product that allows you to connect to the internet and make phone calls and take pictures. There's no fulfillment in that, you know? The fulfillment is like reconnecting with yourself by removing things that are hurting you and standing up for yourself, you know? Do I like and use this or not? Well, I don't like this, so I'm removing it. But stand it up for yourself, you know? See, we got <clears throat> Brooks, uh, the Driftwood Lover. Hi. Brooks, I've been working on my overstuffed house off and on for two years. How do I motivate myself to finish up so I can repaint carpet, etc.? I feel like I've hit a wall. Um, well, I think the first thing is um, you've been working on your house for a couple of years. I think, are you talking about decluttering or just working on um, maintenance? Um, but the fact that you've been working on your house, that's great. So you congratulate yourself. Like, this is great. I've been doing this work. You know, that's nice. And, um, and, and I've hit a wall, which means you're overwhelmed. That's basically what that means. Oh, decluttering. Yeah. So you've hit a, you, you're overwhelmed and, I'm not sure in what way you're actually overwhelmed. That, that would be for you to determine. And maybe that means like, um, maybe you're decluttering for too long for yourself at a particular session um, or what you did with the stuff, maybe some of it's still sitting there or the stuff you decided to get rid of it, some of it's still sitting there. Um, but I do think working in doable amounts for you, because everyone's gonna have the different amount of what they need to serve them. But figuring out what's gonna work for me can help um, reduce the, the overload. And what can also help is when you do declutter, let's say, you, like I was working with this client today and we were going through a bookshelf. <clears throat> and as we went through each level of the bookshelf and cleared it out, I would have them stop <clears throat> and notice um, <clears throat> I would have him notice, like, how does it feel to have that area cleared out? And I congratulated him. So as you're moving along <clears throat> to notice what you've done, because that can help give you confidence. And notice that space that you've created for yourself it can help too. And these are little things, but they really add up. You know, I think those are things that could help. Um, Rio says, that's helpful. I'm moving and need to still focus what's in front of me or keep <clears throat> or keep getting overwhelmed with um, process timeline. Yeah, the focus can really help you. You know, when we look at everything and like, oh, I still got all this to do. Like Driftwood, you're saying like, um, how do I motivate myself to finish up? Like considering the overstuffed house, it really comes back to the focus. Because if we look at everything, it's daunting. It overwhelms us just too much we see all that and like I, I give up so we come back to what can i do right now what little thing can i do right now what doable thing can i do and you start to do it and it quietens your mind and and then as you're doing it noticing like how it feels the relief that comes and like oh look at this i got rid of these things 
like at the end of today's session, the client was like, oh my God, I got, I got rid of all these things because I kept having him notice how it felt as this stuff was going. So <clears throat> that's a reward. That's really, truly a reward that you can give yourself. And, um, <clears throat> and if you are overwhelmed, sometimes it can help to just ask, you know, put, maybe put your hand on your heart and say like, what do I need? What's going on? To listen, you know, because that can help clear the overwhelm sometimes, you know, what's going on? Rather than like staying with the overwhelm, what am I doing? What's going on? What's going to happen? What do, what do I need? And I'm like, ah, you know, like come right back to this. What do I what do I need? Do I need a drink of water? Do I need to eat some food? Do I need some exercise? Do I need to stop this right now? Like the, the decluttering. Do we need to take a nap? To, what do I need? You know. And listening to yourself really goes a long way, you know. We all love to be heard. But we love to be heard by ourselves, especially, you know. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I hear you. It's valuable. These things are so simple. And that's why they often get overlooked, but they're really valuable. They, they change your life around. And we can't always remember these things, but when we do remember them, it's nice. Things become a lot simpler. <clears throat> so, um, And we're going to wrap up in a few minutes because uh, my voice is going <clears throat> and it's been an hour. So there's clutterbusting.com is the website. There's a lot of blog posts on there and videos that you can get more information on. And there's two books that I've written about decluttering that you can see on there. <clears throat> and I work with people by Skype. Um, I've worked with Elizabeth and I work with a lot of people that way. It works really, really well. So if you need help in that way, or the website, like I was saying, there's an audio book if you like to listen to stuff. Um, and there's videos on YouTube. Also on YouTube, if you want, these talks are free, but if you want to donate, there at the Clutter Busting YouTube page on the top, there's a, a bar with um, trees on it. And on the very right, there's, there's a little link there for the website. There's also a link for PayPal. And if you want to donate to these talks, um, feel free. That'd be great. And we'll be back Monday at 1 o'clock Pacific time, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And next Friday, 2 o'clock is the new time, Pacific time, and 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and uh, here on YouTube. And, um, and I, I wish you the best. And I really, I really enjoyed spending time with you. And even though I can't see you, I can feel your presence. And it's a wonderful thing. And I feel lucky to um, be able to spend this time with you. So um, I wish you the best and, um, and uh, take care. Bye.